What's up guys, it's Unders, and in this Logic Pro tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can use the side chain in more ways than just making the pumping bass effect to clean up something. So we've got a really busy example here. Which is a real mess, and we're gonna make it sound like this. just using a couple of sidechain tricks. Today's Logic Pro tutorial is sponsored by DistroKid. If you want to get your music out on the likes of Spotify and Apple Music, check the description below today for a discount on your first year. Essentially, what we're gonna do is use a signal from one audio source to control an effect on another. Now, traditionally, it's going to be a compressor and you'll reduce the level of one signal via the amplitude of another. We can actually do a number of different things and control them in different ways. First things first, let's set up the traditional kick controlling the bass line. So here I've just got a very simple kick loop and some weird complex bass line. What we want to do is have the amplitude of the kick drum control the volume of the bass line. So what we need to do is select our bass track and over here I've got the inspector on the left hand side and just press I to bring that up. It saves us at pressing X and bringing up the whole mixer each time. And we want to add the compressor on here. So this little slice at the top just here below settings, if we just click that once, by default it loads up the compressor for us. Now we don't need to do any fancy routing in Logic because we have a pre-configured sidechain router in the wrapper for all the plugins. So up the top here it says sidechain. If you can't see that there's a little white box here with an arrow. We can click that and it will just pop out for us. What we can do when we click this is we need to choose our input. So the audio source that's going to go into this compressor and control it. So from audio we can now choose the alive and kicking beat which is going to be our kick drum. Now if we play our kick drum back there's more than just the kick in there. There's hi-hats and a double little snare thing. And at the moment, we can see just about everything, especially the snare, catches and compresses. We only want our kick drum to do that. So there's a very simple way that we can do this. Here it says side chain on the compressor. If we change it, we get a different set of parameters here on the right hand side. We can change our detection so it goes to peak rather than RMS. And that's gonna help us because the kick is peaking higher than the hi-hats, but that snare might also get caught. Another way we can avoid catching that snare is make sure we only catch the lowest tones. So here it says filter, and we're gonna say listen to the filter. And we'll... so now even though we've got the bass playing, we don't hear it because we're listening to the filter which is being fed by the sidechain which is our loop here. And we can change our mode here to the type of filter. We're going to want it on low pass and at the minute it's letting almost everything pass right through. We can bring it right the way back down to 29 though and we can see now it's just catching the kick. And we can dial it up a bit more and get it into a position where it's just catching those kick drums and it is reducing it nicely as well. Now we can control how fast this takes effect. If we want it to happen instantaneously as the kick drum comes in, we'll bring the attack right down so it's really, really quick. And if we wanted it to pump, that means it fully hasn't recovered back to zero by the time the next kick comes in. We'll take auto off on the release. We can give it a really long release. And now we get that real true pumping effect. We can see the meter here isn't recovering back to zero. So if we turn the filter off, we'll now be able to hear what this is doing to the bass. So we'll turn the filter back to on so that we can then hear the bass come through. Now the more we bring the threshold down, the more it will compress that bass line down. Notice, however, the bass is still remaining quite loud. That's because we have auto gain set. And what I recommend is when we're side chaining, we turn auto gain off entirely. Listen to the difference now when we bring the threshold back. Now we have that actual reduction of the overall sound. Now we're bringing it back a very harsh amount here. If we were to dial our release back, we'll find that we get the sound back a lot quicker. Dial the threshold back now. 
we can still reduce it a huge amount while keeping it in. It's all something designed and dialed in to taste. Your threshold and your ratio are your main controls to decide how far back this is going to go. As you can see, dialing the ratio back to one over two just gives us a few decibels of compression. We can bring it up ever so slightly. We're already back up at five here. I personally like to use the Studio FET because it also adds a bit of noise in and gives a bit of a noise pump as well. I find this is the best effect that you kind of get with the compressors into Logic. It's a personal taste. Now what else can we do with this? Well, I put another couple of sounds in here. So we've got this extra little loop. And we've got this lead that doesn't really go with the bass line. So let's take the lead loop just here. And instead of applying the compressor this time, let's jump into dynamics and we're going to grab the noise gate. And like before, we've got that rooted side chain in here. So this time, let's root in this fourth dimension beat, which is those poppy tops. What this will do now is the amplitude of that beat will control the gate. So if we put the threshold all the way up to zero, for example, we don't hit anything apart from the loop. But as we dial it back, this loop will open up the gate on this synth sound, allowing some of it to get through. And then based on our attack, hold and release, we can define how long it can get through for and how quickly. We can give it a long release and a long hold. Or we can have it really short and just let it poke through at key moments. Now it will sit with the bass a little better. And just gives it its own little rhythmic accent based precisely on the loop overall. I highly recommend experimenting with the gating options like we've done here. There's lots that can be done with it and it can make other sounds far more usable. And it's really nice to have that identical rhythmic relationship built in. Have fun with it. Let me know how you decide to use it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.